It's to talk about Prop 1 on the ballot. So if y'all have looked at the, camp, at the uh, sample ballot, there is a Proposition 1. What it is is a proposal to raise our city sales tax by 1%. So in the state of Texas, uh, the state charges 6.25%. There's a maximum 8.25% that any, any place can charge. So we don't have a county sales tax or any other special district sales tax. So that means within the city of Jamaica Beach, we're allowed to charge 2%. And uh, historically, we've only charged 1%. And uh, we've basically been leaving, oh, depending upon the year, one hundred and forty dollars to $190,000 revenue from our businesses and that extra 1% sales tax. So um, anyway, it's on the ballot. Please, you know, talk about it. Think about how it will impact you. Um, the majority of that money does come from our visitors and people driving down 3005 visiting our businesses on the way. But it will impact you as well. So I just wanted to talk for a second about reminder that's on there. Uh, you know, talk about it, do your investigation so you'll know how to vote when you, when you go to the polling center. The next thing I want to point out is, as all of you know, we have five candidates for three open alderman positions. On the ballot, it says select between 0, 1, 2, and 3. All that means is you don't have to vote for three. If there's just one you like up here, you only have to vote for one. You don't have to number them. You don't have to put them in any order, right? So. Uh, and you don't, you can vote zero, you can vote for one, you can vote for two, you can vote for three. Uh, you can't vote for five. As much as I'd like to, I can't vote for five. So uh, anyway, that's it. At this point, we're going to turn it over to the candidates. They are going in reverse order from last time. So if you happen to look at the sample ballot, we're going backwards. So bottom up as how, they, as how they're presented on the ballot. And once again, thanks for coming. All right. so you can do the Q&A. So this part of the presentation is just, we're talking to you, there's no Q&A, uh, there's really no interaction, and then when we break up, then we can have interaction, and we can ask uh, direct questions on what, three, what we talked about. Sorry, Go ahead. There's three topics everyone here will discuss, among other things, that's STRs, uh, beach access, and uh, infrastructure. Please save all comments and wild applause for the end. <laughs> Thank y'all, so enjoy, here we go. Okay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming. My name is Aaron. Today as we gather here, I want to address a pressing issue that is echoed throughout the corners of our beloved Jamaica Beach. It's time for us to take a firm stand on a topic that has been simmering beneath the surface of our community interactions, unity. Let me be clear, enough is enough. These petty arguments and bickering commonly found in a schoolyard do not belong within the mature discourse that we strive for in this community. A small faction has been wielding so-called facts not to enlighten, but to divide. This must end, and it must end today. Our community is exhausted, exhausted by division and by those who perpetuate it. I'm here to offer a pathway forward. Jamaica De Beach deserves better and you deserve better. Firstly, transparency must be the backbone of all future actions. We must commit to over communicating to our neighbors regarding everything that affects them directly. 
Every ordinance passed must be accompanied by a clear explanation of what we are doing, why we are doing it, who it will impact, and how. Secondly, we must embrace accountability. It's time for the city to take ownership for its actions and ensure sufficient oversight. We must correct missteps swiftly, ensuring that our community's trust in our government is well placed. Transparency and accountability mean little without concrete action. You deserve a government that prioritizes effectiveness over empty words. Our steps towards success must include defining issues clearly, researching diligently, analyzing impact meticulously, and most importantly, setting and adhering to completion deadlines. There is no urgency without a deadline. And with me, it's action that you will see. On infrastructure, we need a paradigm shift from a reactive to a proactive measure. Our approach to city maintenance in the past has been sporadic at best. This changes now. We will divide the city into 10 zones, each consecutively undergoing scheduled maintenance over the next decade, including essential water and wastewater system checks and street evaluations. The lift stations should all utilize the same brand and type of pumps, keeping an additional pump on standby. If any of the stations experience a breakdown, we simply swap out the damaged pump for the standby pump with only a brief interruption. It makes sense. The damaged pump is then repaired and it then becomes the standby pump. Simple blocking and tackling. I'm not a fan of our use of chlorine gas for disinfection or the potential negative effect that it can have on aquatic life. There's a lot of other options that are out there, many of which I would like to present at a later time. There exists a possibility to privatize the water and wastewater system. I have personally witnessed the empty promises of a pot of gold for many cities. Believe me, these guys are in it to make money, not give it away. For our electrical grid, a thorough analysis is overdue. I've already had discussions with our center point representative to better understand their procedures and timelines. I was pretty underwhelmed by what I learned. We must demand that Jamaica Beach receives the attention that it deserves. I have already photographed and documented examples of worn out power lines in the neighborhood, as well as suspect transformers. We must work with Centerpoint to assess the impact that new larger home constructions have on our infrastructure. We must maintain rigorous standards for our utilities. This environment that we live in is paradise, but it's hell on equipment. The beach, our number one asset, demands th thoughtful planning. We are currently exploring a structured approach to managing beach access to reduce overcrowding and maintain its beauty and cleanliness. Everyone must be heard and represented equally and all ideas are welcome. This will be a sensitive yet crucial discussion about our community's future. We will also continue to address the pressing concerns regarding short-term rentals. While they are a significant part of our economy, they must not infringe upon the rights of others. Thorough, fair, and clear regulations and a renewed emphasis on compliance and enforcement, we can ensure that all property owners, whether they are full-time residents or part-time residents, are respected and their concerns are addressed. I urge each of you to engage in these discussions. Attend our town halls, express your views, and participate in upcoming ballots. It's your right and it's your responsibility. In closing, I demand a government that not only listens, but acts. I demand a government that not only plans, but executes. <clears throat> a government that serves itself, but not every single one of you uh, is the only way uh, forward. Together, Let's put unity back into our community. I appreciate you and would greatly appreciate your vote. Thank you so much for listening. And the next speaker is the fabulous Paula McMillan. Look at that. I was really bad with that last time.
Good afternoon, Jamaica Beach residents. I am Paula McMillan, and I'm excited to be running for City Council. My husband Rob and I have been part of this community since 2013 when we purchased our home. We, along with our two kids, our son Bram and daughter Brianna, spent as much time down here as we could. In June of 2020, we became very uh, engrossed in the community when we became full-time residents. And at this present moment, both of our kids have decided to stay close to home. Our son works out at Moody Gardens in the Preventative Maintenance Department, and our daughter is about to complete her first year at Galveston College, and she works at the Galveston Country Club. My son also attended his first uh, volunteer fire department meeting uh, this past week, and he's excited to see what this experience will bring to him. So we are invested in this community in many kinds of ways. I work part-time at Gracie's on the Strand, and I enjoy seeing a number of the ladies, sometimes you guys out there, um, in the store. And Rob, as much as he wishes he would have been here today, he recently took a job with RHI Tech Services, uh, and he is actually out in Odessa, Texas, working. He's working weeks on, weeks off, and he's always ready to come back to his little piece of paradise here. I graduated from Texas A&M University. <clears throat> Woo, I was hoping that'd come out somewhere. <laughs> and for 29 years, I served in the educational system. Um, I not only taught students and hopefully made a lasting impact in many of their lives, I also uh, contributed in many other realms of education that I feel would benefit myself as a council member. I served on a multitude of committees in different capacities where I was always very approachable, an active listener, adaptable, and I feel a skilled communicator. I created and led numerous clubs that generated lots of participation. I directed a summer camp for 10 years where I had an ability to think outside the box in many realms. I conducted fundraising events and designed and wrote curriculum for my school and instructed and assisted other schools to implement. I coached for many years where I not only served as a sound role model, but I had a very strong work ethic. Rob ran his own AC heating and refrigeration business for over 25 years, and I became very aware of the budgeting elements, the needed manpower, projects, costs associated with unexpected issues that came about with any operation. Even today with my part-time job at Gracie's, I've learned a great deal about small retail business, consumer base, and the tourism element of Galveston. Running for city council was a decision I made because I saw a need. I very much love this community, and I want to see it continue to get better and better. And I want to be part of the solutions we need in a community by working with our mayor, city leadership, and you. As for speaking on the concerns of this community, I begin with STRs. They are a big part of Jamaica Beach, and I personally feel they are not going away anytime soon. There are many appropriate guidelines that are implemented by the city right now at this time to continue to make this a fairly manageable situation. However, if I am elected, I will work with fellow council members and citizens to find continued ways to support all the entities involved from review of all the documentation of citations, complaints, and enforcement measures. This information is extremely important in order to formulate additional ways to improve the SDR regulations. One idea that I have is to put together a committee composed of the city council members, you citizens, management companies, both private and commercial, to address the ever-evolving dynamic that STRs hold. As well, we need to have legal guidance in moving forward so that all of our bases are covered. Our infrastructure continues to need attention, from our water lines to fire hydrants, the maintenance of roads, and the water treatment plant. 
This infrastructure has been neglected in previous years. We need to make sure the city is getting 100% of value for the money associated with these improvements and maintenance. We need to continue to prioritize our most needed issues. Also, continued insight into how our money is being spent on this topic is very important to me, with transparency being the key. Our beach is a wonderful part of our community and unfortunately many others from the public are aware of this element too. With the continued state of rules being enforced and the police presence at our beach, I feel that it is manageable at this time. As good as a beach fee sounds, it comes with many variables that will definitely need to be addressed. I'm not opposed to the idea, but much has to be considered before venturing into this process. I personally am not sure that more policies will keep visitors to a minimum. I really appreciate you coming out today. It kind of validates the importance of how you feel about the community that you've chosen to call home. And I want you to know if I'm elected that I work I will work very hard for you and this community. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Melissa Joseph is up next. Hi neighbors, I'm glad you're here. Hopefully you have followed my weekly Sunday campaign post on Facebook and know what I stand for. I was recently asked if I may have a conflict of interest as an elected official with voting rights because my husband, Sandy Joseph, is a realtor. No, there is no conflict, professionally, personally, or ethically. I've made copies of the Texas Local Government Codes 171 and 176 that are meant for elected officials and conflicts of interest to give you a clear perspective on why there is zero conflict for me to serve on council and have voting rights. What I am excited about is what I can bring to the table to support our city on everything from human resources, with professional behaviors in, in the city council, to development of culture in the workplace and conflict resolution. And my specialty is employment law and the development of effective and successful policies and procedures. Also, the finance and accounting side is part of my specialty as well with department and overall budgets, which I'm always having audit ready. I'm in the middle of that right now where I work and I understand it's a very, very important process. I know what, I'm, I know what I am doing and I'm good at what I do. And if I don't know the answer, I'm okay to admit that and I'm never afraid to ask questions and obtain the answer for anybody that has questions that need my help. I stand by what I do and I do what I say and I will always own up to my own actions. As a human resources professional, I can only do my job by factual information and not hearsay. That kind of information is always wrong, creates misinformation, and it spreads rumors. It's never helpful, do you agree? There are very, three very important hot topics of interest that you all are hearing about from us. I'm going to put it right out there first, the short-term rentals. I know there are STR houses with continuous complaints that are atrocious and should not be allowed to function in Jamaica Beach. There are a greater number of well-managed STRs in Jamaica Beach who are responsible owners and neighbors with respectful renters. Is it possible to eliminate STRs? There are records of other Texas cities and towns who have tried to do this and failed following ex very expensive lawsuits. Does anyone really believe we can eliminate STRs? Find out from candidates who oppose STRs what their plan is to eliminate STRs from our city. I wanna know that too. What I do think we can do is peace peacefully coexist. All STR owners must abide by the STR ordinance. It is a very good ordinance. If you haven't read it, I encourage you to do it three times. I support Texas property owners' rights, whether it is residential or commercial. If I'm elected, I will make sure that 
our STR ordinance is clearly communicated once again and that the ordinance is being followed to the letter of the law. This will allow better control when vetting and reprimanding repeat offenders. But one thing is certain, Texas property owners' rights is critical for all property owners, whether full-time, part-time, or long-term tenants. We all deserve the property right to a peaceful existence. It's simple. The ordinances must be enforced. Now on to beach control. I want our beach back. What will it take? I want to review the plan developed by a very smart and knowledgeable citizen who is not on city council and who spent several months developing a solid plan in conjunction with the GLO standards. This original plan was modified when presented to city council and fell on deaf ears. The full scope of the plan was not presented. I want to make this my project. I miss our beach. I am in favor of beach access fee. I learned at the West Island Galveston Property Owners Association meeting yesterday from Councilwoman Marie Robb, who stated in no uncertain terms that the city of Galveston is diligently pushing this year to eliminate vehicles from accessing their beaches. This does not include Jamaica Beach as the city of Galveston does not have jurisdiction over our beach. So what does that tell you folks? <laughs> Once this plan gets going, and they do plan for success, she made that crystal clear, tourists will be flocking to Free Beach, Jamaica Beach, the only last free beach on the island. I don't want that, do you? Jamaica gets, Beach gets passed over on important infrastructure areas of our coastal care because we are not in the city of Galveston or part of their Galveston Park Board. We need attention and we deserve it. With my experience in grant management, I want to obtain support from county and legislative funds for continued improvement and beautification for our city and our beach. I want our beach back, and that will be my project if I'm elected. On to aged infrastructure. We have water issues and aged piping and infrastructure. We all know that. This buck is yet another area that has been passed on from one administration to the next over the last several years. What I do want to see is a transparent bidding process from our city administrator and pre-check engineering assessments on all areas of aging water piping. One thing that is very important to me, critical, is communication. We need better communication from city council to our city hall to our citizens. Communication is key. It is vital for success. Each of us have a pet project. What I would like to do is develop a library room where we have a kiosk computer where citizens can check out and review on this computer to review our JV website, read our ordinances, and learn more about what's important to them. I believe in citizen feedback. It is critical. Why? Because we are all taxpayers and we have a voice and what our city should be doing to maintain our infrastructure and what's important to our livelihoods, why we chose to live in Jamaica Beach. I have working experience in surveys and polling communications that I do with my employees and with community partners across Galveston County. This could work so very well for our JB citizens. And finally, my goals to you. I'm gonna remind myself daily that I work for you. I'm going to be an active listener and meet you where you are. I listen to understand. I will work with our talented and skilled neighbors who have subject matter knowledge and expertise to provide insights in areas which need attention. I will always have an older woman report to our mayor and our council at each city council meeting for my communications with our citizens and any impact partners I come across and talk with, and I will share what I've learned. I will also remind neighbors that change may take time to accomplish effectiveness and success. Just because it's taking some time doesn't mean it's not happening. My mantra is stay calm and stay kind. And also I have a philosophy that communication is the common denominator for successful development and implementation. The best way I learn is by asking questions. And I will ask questions to get a better understanding of the situation that you're describing. 
Also, whether I'm listening to you or concern, I've listened to your concerns or developing solutions for our city. There are three open council seats. I want to earn your confidence and I ask for your vote. Remember, early voting starts tomorrow at 8 a.m. Together, we can make this happen. Come see me at my table for more information and talk to me about what's important to you. I want to hear you. And thank you for your time. And now I'd like to welcome Bert Dillman. My wife, Kristen Dillman, is going to set up a little uh, slide presentation uh, for us here. There we go. All right. I'm Bert Dillman. Uh, running for uh, alderman position for Jamaica Beach. Uh, next, next slide. Who is Bart? Uh, be real similar to what I did last time uh, when I got up here and spoke to the group and uh, tell you a little bit about my history. Uh, I retired just two years ago after 40 years of working in the oil and gas industry. Um, <clears throat> I was an engineer by an engineer by degree in practice, but the last sorry, the last 20 years I was senior vice president of a of a major oil company, and uh, I ran uh, lead on the commercial. Can you hear me? A little louder. A little louder. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, lead lead on commercial and uh, and business development, and uh, and also I managed a 30 million dollar operating income business unit. Um, I am a, a very uh, professional, ethical type person, uh, and I focus on policies, procedures, and processes uh, to get things done. Uh, those are the things I learned over my four years of, of, uh, of, of working. Now, how does that how does that uh, background uh, help in in running the city and supporting the, the citizens of the city? Uh, the first is my engineering experience. I can I can uh, that can be used to help develop and complete economical infrastructure projects. Uh, I give you a simple example: is right after um, uh, Sharon became our new mayor, I went up to the city to the city and met with Mercer and Branch, and just asked some simple engineering questions to the Mercer engineer, and from that discussions, uh, we now get more uh, transparent and uh, and monitor, uh, transparency and monitor and being able to monitor the cost of those projects. Uh, so that, that one little simple meeting uh, by just using my engineering experience uh, has helped the city already. The next the next one is uh, my contracting experience uh, working with lawyers is uh, it makes you think about what what you know today and what you don't know tomorrow, uh, and not just giving away uh, giving away rights uh, for things you don't know, or trying to make a decision today that you can leave for somebody else to make. Uh, you know, 30 years. We don't want to give away something today that in 30 years this the city's going to want, and let let those folks uh, in 30 years decide if they want to uh, to. Uh, uh, to, to change things or uh, or how they want things managed. And a couple examples um, is the uh, that water treating plant we have in the back. If we do decide to go with an outside company, is we want to make sure we're not giving away our our water rights. Um, water is going to be a a, a commodity uh, that's going to be very precious, and even though it's it's number two water. That, that water is going to be valuable, and it may not be today, but there could be a day in the future where that water, and we don't want to give that that right away. That's a, that's one example. The other is uh, on new business development. Um, I, I believe there, with everything going down west, is is there could be more new businesses built on 3005 right here in Jamaica Beach, and uh, we want to make sure when we uh, write contracts with those folks that we're not giving away a future farm uh, and that we know what we're signing up for. We're not you know, signing up because we may know who the owner is today, but we may not know who that owner is tomorrow. And that 
owner tomorrow could turn it into a nightclub or a bingo hall or something like that. I don't know if they want those or not, but that's that's this, uh, a decision that should be made later and not that given up in negotiations in a contract today uh, of not knowing what, what could happen tomorrow. Next slide is what I am not. Uh, many of y'all know that, that I'm not on social media. Uh, last year in the, uh, in the election, it was pretty nasty. Uh, my wife even got broke through the mud and I said, I'm not gonna put up with that stuff, so I'm not gonna get on. Uh, it's just simple as that. Uh, you know, people need to just be nice to one another and I, I prefer to interact on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, you know, look at my 40 year career is everything was done face-to-face -face or on the phone and you weren't hiding behind your computer or hiding behind a text. And nowadays it seems like the, the younger generation, they, they don't want confrontation, so therefore they'll send a text. Uh, instead of picking up the phone and talking to somebody direct and getting to understand what they're talking about. The other is I don't have any, I don't have any candidate signs. Uh, same thing, it got pretty nasty last year with all the signs and I just wanna send a message that I am not a politician. And those two things right there uh, are good examples of I'm not a politician. I want, I want to be a statesman, and what a statesman does is it takes care of the community first and not worry about what, what I'm going to be doing or what's going to be my next uh, political position, uh, anything like that. So that's what I am not. I am not a politician. Uh, the issues that need to be addressed, uh, you've heard from the other candidates, is, it's, it's the SDRs, it's speech control, infrastructure, and I added city budget in there because it all boils down to money. Uh, the decisions we make are going to impact our budget, uh, or could impact our, our, uh, our taxes. Um, there's, folks have said before that I must have eyes in the back of my wallet because I watch, it. I watch my money and I'm going to watch your money too. <laughs> uh, and then on this, I'm not going to go into as much detail as the other candidates have today on that. Uh, on these because I, I don't think this is a one-person decision in any of these categories and uh, I will gladly bring my professionalism to the to the discussion and uh, and find what what the good common ground is uh, for all to solve all these issues that we have today whether it's SDRs infrastructure or the before beach control and what I'll use is some of my personal beliefs uh, one is to first seek to understand before being understood. In other words, you need to be a good listener. Uh, you need to let people talk things out. Uh, you know, that's a good uh, that's a good reason for not being on social media because on social media, so many people don't seek to understand first. They just shoot first, and and they forget that you need to to aim before you shoot. Um, the other thing is I'm going to strive. I'll strive for clear and concise communication with the residents of Jamaica Beach and prevent. Uh, and prevent unforeseen consequences. Uh, and, and sometimes it's prevent unseen consequences as well. And I'll get back to, uh, I'll give you an example on that one. Uh, if y'all been following the scandal in Houston with uh, Mayor Turner, uh, where uh, they dismissed so many criminal cases because he wanted his metric of crime being reduced in the city of Houston to be positive. And while crime was going up, People were saying crime's going up. He says, no, the statistics say it's going down. Well, the re reason why is because he was hiding that they were dismissing hundreds of cases, criminal cases, and now that's that's not flashing on them. You know, Turner's gone now, but the current administration have to deal with it, and the, the uh, communities are having to deal with people that should be locked up uh, or out committing crimes again. And then back to the seek to understand uh, before being understood. I'll give you a good example of, of, uh, of what, what that could look like. Uh, the other day, getting on a bus, uh, this guy gets on the metro bus in Houston. The guy gets on the bus and he's got a three-year-old and a five-year-old. They were about three and five. And, uh, and he goes and sits down and his kids just start running a ruckus in the bus, up and down, screaming, yelling, and you know, people are looking at him and like, you're wanting to say, man, what are you doing? You know, take care of your kids, straighten them out. And then uh, you come to find out uh, the guy's in stress because he, he just left the hospital uh, where his wife had just passed. And he's, he's debating on how he's gonna tell his two little kids 
that their mother is not coming home. So that's one of those to seek to understand that, what that guy's position was instead of yelling at him to, to take care of his kids. Because once you understand that is, let those kids run. That guy's got bigger problems than those two little kids running around, you know, trying to ruin my little day. So, so just think about that. And then in conclusion, in conclusion, remember what brought us here to Jamaica Beach. It's our small community. It's, it's, uh, it's picking each other up. It's supporting each other, everybody else. It's uh, not tearing down people. Uh, you know, that's why we're here, because we like a little community. We're not in the big city of Houston anymore. And then the last two more slides here. Uh, vote for me, uh, April 22nd through April 30th. And if you don't get early voting done, then it's May 4th. And then if I'm elected alderman, I'm going to deem that every fish is 15 inches. So we all have to be Sorry, this is tight. All right. Howdy. Uh, my name is Graham Dermott. I'm running for Alderman, like all these fine people here. Uh, if you haven't met me yet, I am a third generation Jamaica Beach resident, born and raised here. Uh, my grandpa, Red, founded Seven Seas uh, back in the 60s. Uh, so if you've lived here much longer than me, then you've probably met his monkey, uh, that chimpanzee that also worked up there. Uh, my grandparents lived here, my parents lived here, my aunt and uncle lived here. I'm raising a fourth generation of Jamaica Beach resident right now, a one-year-old and a three-year-old. Uh, my dad used to be president of the fire department. Uh, when my mom had enough of us, he would take us up to the fire station to let us play on the fire trucks, which were green back then, actually. Uh, when I was growing up in Jamaica Beach, the roads were made of dirt. Uh, we had septic tanks, no cable, and the only two restaurants out here were the Straw Hat and the Sand Dollar. Uh, this is my home, and that's where I'm running for city council. Uh, my experience, I've got a degree from uh, Texas A&M in uh, architecture, a member of the Fighting Texas Ag class of 2001. Got 16 years of project management experience, 12 years of operations experience, 10 years working as a supervisor uh, for the Galveston Beach Patrol. I've done rescues all over this island, uh, including many out here in Jamaica Beach. Uh, and I also manage Stewart Beach Park uh, for five years. Um, my main reason for candidacy, honestly, is I'm, I'm tired of the STR, but have not been uh, shy about that. That's why I'm running. Uh, I hear all the time about property rights, and it only seems that the property rights of STRs are considered, whereas I feel like we have the right also to not have a revolving hotel next door to us, uh, parties of all uh, hours. Uh, we also have a right to not have our property devalued by living next door to a hotel. Would you know, knowingly buy a house for your family next to a house that has 10, 12, 15 people revolving through it every three days? I personally wouldn't, and I didn't, and now I live in a house that has that situation, even though that isn't how it was when I bought there. Uh, it's not actually a mystery why most STR owners don't live next to their STRs. Uh, what is a responsible or good STR? Well, I've yet to met a single person that doesn't think they uh, are a responsible STR owner, uh, yet there are problems all over the city and something doesn't add up, if you're asking me. Um, it's impossible for someone who lives out of town to monitor their own house and control what happens. Uh, even if they're abiding by the ordinance, 10 people staying at a house, having parties five to seven days a week, 
uh, is a disruption to the people that live there. Uh, and owning an SCR or multiple SCRs and convincing your neighbors not to call the police when you have a problem is not being a good neighbor, it's being a good businessman. Because what you're doing is you're having your neighbors keep any record of anything that's going on at those STRs off the books, and so the city has no recourse for them. Um, each STR borders five to eight properties in this neighborhood, and with 320 short-term rentals right now, that means pretty much every single house in this neighborhood is affected by that. Um, it's not my only situation. This. Uh, I've spoken at City Council against this multiple times. I've supported every measure that's come up publicly and spoken at Council about it uh, for limiting these. And I know, I assume Melissa was talking to me when she said uh, people who are vocal about it asked them what they were due. Well, I met a uh, person on the ferry last weekend when we were taking our kids to go see the Dolphins. He and his business par partner own a short-term rental on a canal that makes $60,000 a year. Uh, they pay $500 permit fee across the board. I think one plan I would do is change that permit fee to a dollar per uh, GCAD square footage. Uh, may not eliminate them, but we're going to think about it if we really want one because that's going to get a little bit more expensive. Additionally, if you're putting more people in a house because your house is bigger, you should be paying more than the people that are putting two or three people in their house. As far as beach access, if we go that route, I have a lot of experience with this. I managed Stewart Beach for five years, which is the most visited beach in Galveston and at Texas, even in Texas while I was there. We parked over 3,000 cars a day sometimes and had 12,000 people come a day. Uh, we charged $15 per day and $50 for a season pass. And the cool thing about that is you have gate attendants who can take some of the stress off our police who are doing a fantastic job out there, but it's not a policeman's job to park cars. Uh, they need to be watching the people and making sure nothing is going wrong. So if we do have a beach user fee, we can have a gate person, we can have a uh, parking attendance and things that that fee will pay for, and then we can let the police go back to policing. Also, it gives a first point of contact for people who are coming to the beach. They know all the rules when they talk in, when they pay, when they check in, and then they tell them exactly where the free parking area, pay parking area, all those kinds of things. Uh, so if we go that route, I have probably more experience in the actual operation of such a thing than uh, a lot of people on this island. Uh, and also, uh, before I get to infrastructure, I'd like to touch on something that a lot of people haven't talked about, uh, and that's hurricanes. I have a lot of first-hand experience with hurricanes. Uh, when they come, I help get my house ready, my parents' house ready, uh, my grandparents' house when they were here, and my uh, office. The first hurricane I remember living in Jamaica Beach was Hurricane Alicia which blew the roof off our house, and then all the way up to Hurricane Ike, which blew the bottom off of our house. So I guess you could say in a terrible way I had a uh, hurricane experience from top to bottom. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things that people don't know about hurricanes, and if you've just moved here, uh, even if you're running for city council, even if you just moved here, you can't explain a hurricane unless you've lived through one. Uh, the quietness, the flies, how big they are, uh, the no power, uh, I came out here during night, you had to have four-wheel drive to get out here. Uh, but the city came together, they were handing out shovels and trash bags and all kinds of stuff at City Hall. And Kathy from Here Tech was cutting here in the parking lot in her house that had no power. Uh, I lived in the Holiday Inn for a month because I was doing emergency operations, but it's a struggle. And one thing I think that people aren't thinking about necessarily to tie this back to SDRs is, there's a competition for resources when a hurricane comes through. And if you're competing to get back in a house that you live in, and you're staying in a trailer or a hotel with someone who owns three or four houses and they're just trying to get their rentals back up, that's not a good situation. Additionally, the revolving door of people coming in and out isn't gonna stop because we're recovering from a hurricane. Your house is gonna be broken and vulnerable, and if the house next door is a rental, they're still gonna be cycling people out of their party. And if you think they're gonna not, just kinda look at your property and take pictures of your property and go on your property and make their Instagram post about damages, and you're crazy because they definitely will. Uh, and the infrastructure, uh, I don't have a lot of experience with pumps, with pipes, all that kind of stuff, but I do project manage uh, multi-million dollar projects on a daily basis. Uh, I would start out with an assessment from a consultant, kind of triage the needs that we have, establish a critical path and a rough order of magnitude on the numbers we need to get it fixed, and then just move down the line and start tackling it in little bites like that. Uh, I'm Brandon McDermott. I'm running for city council. I'm the first spot on the ballot. Please vote for me. Thanks.
those short-term rentals, by the way, I forgot to explain that. Uh, ask yourself, do you want more green dots on this map? I don't know. All right, we'll, we'll see y'all at our tables. <laughs> Thank y'all.